Britain's nuclear-powered hunter-killer submarines are in a state of constant alert. Five submarines are key to the first line of defence of the United Kingdom. Threat submarine in the area. Part submerged spy. One contact vi visual. It's about making sure that harm doesn't reach our shores. Part deadly weapon. This is a ship of war. It is designed to inflict damage on other people. Stand by to land engagement. That is the whole purpose of the submarine, is to, uh, to deliver violence to the enemy. Fire! Historically, it's been a closed world. We're the silent yeah. service. We don't generally talk about ourselves. Back shot across the 091. One sweep, uh, one but for the five. first time ever, this series has full access to a British submarine on patrol as we follow HMS Turbulent on her final deployment. It's the story of 130 men in an isolated, cramped and close-knit world, <laughs> thousands of miles from home and family. So I just want to phone you up and tell you how much I love you. On a mission where discipline is paramount. You can get the odd fight. In three months you've been in front of me twice, which I think is unacceptable. Teamwork is crucial. We're a brotherhood that drive this submarine. Amazing, isn't it? Middle of the ocean, British submarine, British helicopter, doing their jobs. And danger is ever present. You're not sure when anything's going to go wrong, because obviously we've got a nuclear reactor, so everything has to be done in a safe procedure. You have seen the news um, with regards to Libya. Unknown vessel, this is surface submarine. You are approaching me in a threatening manner. As they sail through the Mediterranean, and into the troubled waters of the Middle East. In this episode, Turbulent enters the danger zone. If we're going to be attacked by opportunist fundamentalists, then it's going to be tonight. The next generation start training. Don't look so nervous, all right? And there's food for thought in the galley. Arrowroot. Can't say I've ever heard of it. Definitely never cooked with that. HMS Turbulent is in the Mediterranean, preparing to dock at the NATO naval base at Suda Bay in Crete. Gale force winds are not helping her cause. The pilot coming aboard to guide them into port is drenched. Turb's goal is to patrol the waters of the Middle East, the only British submarine in the region capable of firing Tomahawk missiles. But over the past few weeks, she's been frustrated by mechanical problems. A fault in a steam generator came close to scuppering her involvement in the recent NATO operation against the Libyan regime in the central Mediterranean. A brief stay in Crete will enable her to fix her defects and give the men a well-deserved break. Ultimately, the huge responsibility of getting Turb safely to her destination rests with her captain, Commander Ryan Ramsey, who has led her crew for two and a half years. Once we've gone alongside in uh, Suda Bay, there's still quite a uh, work package to complete to put us in, the, um, in a, a really decent material state uh, to repair some of the uh, defects that we've um, encountered during the last three weeks. We need to store ship back up to 90 days and then we should be ready to go. From Suda Bay, the most dangerous part of their mission will take them into two choke points, the Suez Canal and the Bab el-Mendeb Strait. They will then enter the troubled waters of the Indian Ocean, en route to Fujairah. The next big challenge um, is to get through Suez itself, which is no mean feat uh, with a nuclear submarine, um, lots of merchant vessel traffic, um, the, the restrictions that the canal has on it itself. Uh, and then the next challenge is after that, the Red Sea, which is a bizarre place to operate, um, operate dived. Um, the Bab el-Mendeb, where there's a potential for, um, uh, for uh, action against us. Um, if, if Somali pirates or other pirates operating in that area deem that they want to give it a go. Uh, and then also proceeding for an area that is, has got a lot of warships conducting counter piracy to contribute to that counter piracy effort before we get alongside of Fajara. So, so there's, there's some numerous challenges ahead of us yet. The next leg of the journey will test one time fish farmer from Nottingham, able seaman Buster Brown, too. 
He's already been disciplined twice for lateness in his three months on board. But today is a good day as he prepares to receive his dolphins, the badge that signals entry into the fraternity of submariners. Dolphins are customarily presented in a glass of navy rum. Okay, health and safety. One, you don't have to take this out of alcohol unless you don't want to. Anybody not want to? <laughs> Two, do not swallow the dolphins. Catch them in your teeth. And three, if you're going to hurl, make sure you do it into the bucket down there. Okay, well done. Cheers, sir. Well done. That was like, uh, that was like water. On receiving his dolphins, Buster joins the procession of officers and enlisted men heading off for two days short leave. Loving it. Sleeping quarters on board are so cramped that the men are allowed to stay in hotels when they're in port. As they head for their accommodation, the planning starts for a night out on the tower. As a measure of the camaraderie on board HMS Turbulent that the officers and enlisted men end up socialising together. Get your bedtime soon, sweetheart. I'm just phoning the skipper, hold on. <laughs> Is it your round, sir? <laughs> Got your number. You should never have given yeah. me your phone number now, boss, I tell you. Yeah, it's yeah. nice Cheers, man. Thank you, man, for the special forces. You are. <laughs> The men make the most of a rare moment of freedom. Come on, boys, come on, it's so fun, it's so fun. It'll be a long time before they get another chance to let their hair down. But not everyone gets two days off. Back in the boat, Richard Farrow is still at work. It may seem like a punishment, but it's actually a reward. Richard's just passed his basic submarine qualification. As a result, he's been given a shift as officer of the day, in charge of the skeleton crew looking after the boat in port. His duties include overseeing the storage of fresh provisions. All the food arrived uh, about two and a half hours late, and because of that, the whole ship's company were in to help with the, the, the store ship. They were hanging around, and it's meant that everyone got away really late. Even with the boat nearly deserted, Richard's watch is proving troublesome. He's clearly unsure about the procedure that ensures there is sufficient air in the ballast tanks. Oh, don't forget, for the EXO, get a decent set of tank dips done overnight so yeah, they're ready to go. Vents and blows, as they're called, ought to be a relatively simple procedure. Just brief me on the, um, Chief, just brief me on the stages as we go through. Richard is supposed to be ensuring that everyone's following the proper safety measures, but it's not going to plan. Sound like chicken control. Uh, we didn't do the warning pipe, um, and this, it was just a comms breakdown between me and the Chief Stoker. We didn't do the warning pipe. We're then going to do the two second blow properly, then do the vent. They're not happy with the procedure. There's more than protocol at stake here. Richard's career prospects may depend on getting this right. It's fair to say he struggled to uh, make the grade as in terms of the logistics officer and what we're expecting from him. To either pick up, pick up the bat and run, in which case he's not delivering to the standards we expect of him, or we'll continue a downward spiral, in which case then we'd, uh, we may pursue an administ administrative process to uh, remove him from the submarine. I've done lots of off-sale duties before on Bangor class submarines, and this is way up there with as challenging as they've, as, as they've been. And it's, it's not necessarily that the uh, that there's been that many officers of the day problems, but there have been uh, logistics problems um, as well. So that made it um, a very challenging day while all that was happening. So, what, I mean, after we've done the... Uh... Richard needs to master his various roles, and quickly. Tomorrow, it's back to sea as the mission resumes. After repairing her mechanical faults, HMS Turbulent leaves Crete on her way to negotiating one of the toughest tests yet of her capabilities, the Suez Canal.
while taking on stores in Suda Bay, Tubbs picked up four young trainee submariners. The man in charge of settling them in is Chief Petty Officer Matt Ling. He joined the Navy as a 16-year-old, so he knows just how they feel. All right, don't look so nervous, all right? How's your first 12 hours on the submarine been like? Surprising. Yeah. Surprising? Yeah. I'm in the process of lining you up with some sea daddies, okay? And what they're gonna do is they're gonna look after you. They're gonna guide you in the right direction. It is their first time at sea. Uh, they're very green. Even the questions like, what, what time do we eat? What time do we go to bed? Everything, we have to spoon, spoon feed them information. And they've done specific submarine training. Uh, that's classroom based. Now they join us to consolidate that training in a wet phase. Uh, they've got a target date, which I think is around about the middle of May to get their dolphins on their chest and become qualified submariners. And the only way they can do that is by spending time on a submarine, learning the systems, knowing how a submarine works. Turbs has made it safely through the Mediterranean. But now she must transit the 100-mile-long Suez Canal. It'll save them sailing round the whole of Africa, but it's no simple task. The canal is one of the world's busiest shipping lanes. Worse, Turbs has to navigate it while surfaced, which makes the transit even more dangerous. The professional stakes are high for Commander Ramsey and his crew. He will be the first captain to sail a British submarine through the canal since Egypt was rocked by revolution and the country remains unstable. Also under immense pressure is the navigator, Gareth Griffiths. Born at Langley Air Force Base in Virginia, he must chart the course that guides the submarine and her payload safely through the narrow channel. But he will need help from the Egyptian authorities to pull it off. They provide us with um, an Egyptian army escort for the entire transit, 1,600 troops, and uh, yeah, 500,000 pounds. So it's, uh, it's a lot of money to get through. Uh, the consequences of having a, any UK warship um, attacked on the way through the Suez will be uh, quite disastrous. One of the boat's most experienced lieutenants, John Lewis aspires someday to command his own submarine. For now, He's leading the watch on this phase of the transit. A submarine by its very nature isn't at home on the surface. She's not manoeuvrable, she's slow to respond. You've got a lot of merchant vessels anchoring in close proximity to each other. So manoeuvring in and around the ships is quite difficult in itself. Coupled with that, uh, the language difference, obviously uh, the Arabic port uh, control. They do speak English, but with any uh, language gap, there's always a little bit of um, uncomfortable miscomprehension which can lead to uh, large merchant vessels coming very close so it's uh, a lot of concentration required in all the watchkeeping positions. Turbs joins the queue for the southbound convoy at Port Said. Surrounded by a mass of colossal shipping she faces a monumental challenge navigating to her designated waiting point. so her crew could do without having to battle the plague of tiny bugs swarming off the Egyptian coast. It's pretty horrible. For Gareth, the navigator, there's a highly surprising yet crucial aspect to planning a Suez transit. We've spent three months planning this, talking to, to the embassy in, uh, in Cairo, making sure that all the paperwork's in place. It seems like administration wouldn't play a huge part in a, in a transit like this, but it's, it's almost half the battle, because you need to get that paperwork in. If you don't, and you turn up, and, uh, and you get delayed because of your paperwork, then, uh, yeah, you've really uh, scored a bit of an own goal there. But masses of paperwork is not the only price the sewers exacts. Water usage suffers too. The boat's second in command and enforcer is Gareth Jenkins. His word is law. We can produce as much fresh water as we want using our nuclear reactor as a, a heat source. The problem is only getting rid of the dirty water. So whilst we're putting water conservation measures in force today to go through the Suez Canal, because we can't pump dirty water into the Suez Canal, whilst on covert patrol, we'd also do it to avoid having to pump dirty water into the sea 
because pumping water or gas into the sea makes noise, and that's a counter detection opportunity. One parachute site is a note on the water consumption. Many remains high, so make every effort to avoid wasting water. I know it's Saturday night, but as far as I'm aware, nobody's going on the pool tonight, so go easy on the water. Enjoy your steaks. This is the XO. That is all. Like everything in this unique world, there is even a protocol for showering. A shower lasting more than a minute is called a Hollywood and is universally frowned on. A Hollywood is somebody who thinks they're in a five-star hotel and might come in, turn the shower on to warm up, clean their teeth, then get in the shower, have about five to ten minutes of water, and then get out of the shower. So they use about maybe 10 or 12 man's ration of water. That's what we call a Hollywood, and that's to be discouraged at the highest level. Isn't it, Rydal? Yes, sir. You wouldn't have a Hollywood, would you? Never have a Hollywood. God damn it. <laughs> Don't let me catch you in a Hollywood. Getting into position for the convoy may be a headache. It's a really bad for you. But it pales in comparison with the difficulties of navigating the sewers. Depth of the channel's maintained at 22 and a half metres. Sounds like a lot, but we can draw 10. So it's only 10 metres to play with in terms of distance from going aground. If you have a steering gear failure in the canal, you're going to be going aground pretty quickly. Meanwhile, the Egyptian authorities have huge diplomatic capital invested in Turbs negotiating the sewers without incident. Hence the military helicopters and the army battalion they assigned to protect her. Failure is not an option for either party. During its transit, Turbs will require four boat transfers to pick up local pilots who know the channel intimately. Such is the importance of getting her missiles through the canal that either the captain or the XO will be on the bridge throughout the 16-hour passage. It's been interesting seeing the amount of traffic going both directions and the amount of uh, freight that is going you know, to the United Kingdom and Europe is just incredible. Very, very busy place. Part of our bit here is not just transiting to operations we're going to do, it's actually about um, showing presence. This is about demonstrating uh, what we're capable of, ability to operate anywhere worldwide, and actually a, a ship of war passing through the sewers is a good a sign for the UK. The sewers transit is also good news for a UK charity. With the accent and team building, some crew members are attempting to row the distance of the canal before the boat completes the passage. As the sun sets on day 50, Turbs finally clears the canal. One major obstacle down, plenty more to come. She now enters the Red Sea, which at more than a mile deep provides ideal conditions for her next big trial, a deep dive to prove her watertight integrity. OK, off swatch, take the submarine's deep diving depth. Take submarine's deep diving depth, I said. Ship control. Ship control. Six down, keep Six deep down. diving depth. Six down, keep deep diving depth. Depth of water, 1,500 metres, safe depth. Depth of water, 1,500 metres, safe depth, depth control, roger. Safe depth, six metres off swatch, roger. Four down, five metres. The submarine goes very, very deep, and in this kind of water climate, uh, that's important because it cools the boat down, but more importantly, it means that we can evade any potential submarine contacts or surface ships that might be looking for us. Turbs dives well below 300 metres. At this depth, the pressure on the hull is enough to buckle the partitions. Can't shut the door, sir. <laughs> deep dive in depth. It's buckled then, right? Any kind of malfunction could be fatal, but for the crew, these are everyday dangers. When the boat returns to normal routines, there's some unexpected action in the galley, a cook-off between the XO, Gareth, and the Cox and Paddy. This is the chef's idea. So every week we'll have uh, like a cook-off between various members of the ship's company. It being the first one, it's me against the coxswain. XO's taking the card. Both men are preparing a main course and a dessert. Paddy's trying to outdo his boss with a chicken dish. 
Meanwhile, Gareth's got something fishy up his sleeve. Arrowroot. Can't say I've ever heard of it. Definitely never cooked for that. We're making North Atlantic cod wrapped in uh, par uh, Palmer ham with uh, ribbons of carrot and coriander and uh, followed up by a uh, orange and lemon pancetta. Yes. Your mushrooms are concerning me. Your mushrooms are just sitting there. Your mushrooms are concerning me. <laughs> Watch your fingers, right? Well, how much of this, all of it? What's that, Copson? That's me potato soup. Oh, potato. Here's posh. <laughs> Tactics or what? You got it? North Atlantic cod rolled in courgette yeah, and ham. Don't courgette. tell them who cooked what. With um, a tomato and onion right. chutney. Yes. Finally, the meals are presented to the panel of judges, comprising the captain, head chef, and the chief stoker. Pancetta was lovely, fresh, um, but the winning dish ended up being the front two dishes based mostly on the sauce on the chicken and the rice pudding, which was just incredible. The judges opted for Paddy's dishes. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> Perfectly happy now. One over on my boss. It's not good for my uh, promotion reports if I keep beating them too often. No. But uh, once for a bit of fun. Hi, chop. From a naval family in Kent, Engineering technician Edward Timo Timpson's older brother is a sub-lieutenant who is training to be a warfare officer. Now, after much deliberation, Timo has decided to put his name forward for officer training too. I should have joined an officer, but I didn't do it at the time, and now it seems like I had an opportunity to do it. To achieve that, you have to get your papers raised. Uh, so you'll, you'll go to the table, and a commanding officer will raise your papers. You'll go for a requestman the DWO, who will become my divisional officer who writes my reports. Um, he, he will set me like leadership tasks and, uh, for example, I, I helped, helped organise the rowing of the Suez Canal with the KSO. So it's just, it's just things like that which get, give you a chance to uh, kind of do, do, some, do some leadership and just so command can see how you react and that kind of thing. When it comes to doing Tub's dirty jobs, Dan Gardine tops the list. The veteran submariner has been chosen to be a sea dad and train one of the wannabe submariners. Okay, so tell me what these are and what they do. Oh, you get these guys come on board, new SMQs, looking to get their BSQ and their dolphins, and uh, rather than them walking around aimlessly, sort of looking at things, trying to figure out what's going on, we assign them a sea dad, which is basically like a senior guy that's qualified that uh, they can learn from. It's always good to be a sea dad. It's always a good reminder to oneself anything that you might have uh, not done over the years. You know, you sort of have a tendency to remember again and think, oh shit, yeah, I've just got to show him this and uh, you remember it yourself. After his recent brushes with authority, Buster seems to be turning himself around. With Matt's help, he too is focusing on improving his skills. Yeah, he's my divisional officer, so if I want, any time I'm in the trouble, he can kind of represent me, if you like, and it, don't get me wrong, he'll pick me up for my shortcomings, but he'll uh, put me in for my the good things I've done as well, you know. I will dedicate an awful amount of time to somebody who wants to learn, and over the last few weeks, he has shown me a, a high level of commitment. It's still a professional relationship. I mean, we're not, we're not drinking buddies. However, I'm starting to see the upward trend of his performance now, he's getting there. Yeah, I'm not a career criminal or anything, I was two hours adrift and, um, you know, two hours late, obviously I've got to do the uh, punishment, but I'm not, I'm not planning on getting in the shit again. In the galley, there's a reminder of just how isolated from the outside world life on board the submarine can be. It's making some hot cross buns today, it, uh, it's Good Friday. Um, we forgot, we've just been told. <laughs> so quickly I uh, just make up 100 and 130 odd of um, hot cross buns. The thing is, you don't, you don't realise what day it is. It's only when someone tells you, you think, oh yeah, Easter. The 
crew knows that Turbs will be most vulnerable to attack from Somali pirates or Al-Qaeda terrorists as she transits the Bab el-Mendeb Strait. It's the most dangerous choke point on the mission, and she's got to go through it while surfaced. But before she even arrives there, the crew spot two suspicious vessels. The potential threat sees the captain and XO scrambling to man the periscopes at the same time. Oh yeah, 390. See him? Bang on the start of the beam. Okay, adopt force protection, posture bravo. Adopt force protection, posture bravo. Actually, we've encountered them earlier than we thought. Two um, skiffs. Uh, so small, small boats uh, with lots of people inside them, just loitering. They've got uh, generally RPGs and also AK-47s is what they're armed with. Uh, damage to the submarine is something that can happen, but it's the people that I'm most concerned about. We can withstand damage, actually it's making sure my men are safe. The officer of the watch issues a warning. Unknown vessel, this is surface submarine. You're approaching me in a threatening manner. Your intentions are unclear. Please turn away immediately. Can't determine how many people are on deck. The brief encounter ends without incident, but the vigil continues. The most dangerous part is, is yet to come, and that's the uh, next 12 hours. On the last one, they were definitely talking to each other, so the likelihood is that that information's got back, and now they know there's a submarine going through tonight. Turbs lost contact with the skiffs. Not knowing if they're following or if others are waiting for her at the strait is going to make it a long night for the crew. Turbulent is about to navigate the Bab el Mendeb Strait, easily the most dangerous choke point on her passage through the Middle East. Passing between the failed state of Somalia and Yemen, regarded as an Al Qaeda stronghold, Turbs makes a tempting target for terrorists or pirates. We will be the uh, only UK Tomahawk shooter um, east of Suez. It's, it's a uh, standing commitment for Commander Joint Operations. We're one of his first strike assets should he need to use it. And actually an attack on us um, that damages that capability, removes it from uh, his, um, his order of battle. Their first sighting of a suspicious vessel has been followed by two more. And as night falls, the tension rises. Good evening, men. CXS speaking with the wall at 1900. Having transited the Red Sea, we're now in the Straits of Babel Mendeb. This is the most dangerous part of our transit to the Indian Ocean, and right now the lawless state of Yemen is only a few miles to the east. The state of Yemen is popular amongst terrorist organizations, including Al-Qaeda, and if we're going to be attacked by opportunist fundamentalists, it's going to be tonight. We have already spotted suspicious go fast on three occasions today, and it's likely that we will see more tonight. So remain vigilant overnight and be ready for a quick draw. This is the exit, that's all. Breaking, clear, well. It's been an anxious night for everyone, but as dawn breaks, it's clear that Turbs made it safely through the strait. Now in the Indian Ocean, Turbs is gearing up for a different threat. Being seen from the air is one of the greatest dangers for any operational submarine. An aircraft can spot one at depths of up to 100 feet in clear water. One sweep. So today she's joining forces with a helicopter from a British Royal Fleet Auxiliary ship in the region. They're going to help sharpen each other's skills by playing a game of cat and mouse across miles of open sea. Warner, any indication of a mode change that he's counter detected us, I want to know. We'll be dropping all the masts except search and uh, seeing how he gets on from there. For this part of the exercise, Turbs is going to give the helicopter a fighting chance. She's arranged to appear at several pre-arranged points to help her airborne colleagues. 
Ideally, we want to practice staying undetected by the helicopter to keep our own skills up to date, but also it's an expensive asset, as I'm sure you can appreciate. So for the first part of this serial, uh, we've been uh, fast and deep and acting uh, in an evasive manner, uh, trying to uh, break contact from the initial contact they had at periscope depth. And now what we've done is we've come shallow, made a lot of noise in the water, steering towards them a little bit so their sensors have a better chance of picking us up so they can get us and then uh, track us and improve their own OC. But even when she's trying to be seen, it seems Tubbs isn't an easy target. Despite our best efforts, there's no indication of uh, counter detection from the aircraft at this range. I believe this is probably because we've had to displace ourselves to the north of the merchant vessel lane. Eventually, the boat surfaces completely to rendezvous with her pursuers. It's been pretty good training for both uh, my team and theirs as well. Amazing, isn't it? Indian Ocean this is, effectively. Gulf of Aden, British submarine, British helicopter, doing their jobs. Quite incredible. Even on an operational mission, the training never stops. Below decks, an aspiring plainsman is learning how to dive the boat for the first time. But much to the officer of the watch's annoyance, his more experienced peers are letting him down. Panel, cut, 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 WT. Better switch on. Ship control, you're eight deep, he's reported washing, get the revs on. All positions, officer watch. Hold reports. Gentlemen, the performance so far this morning has been lacklustre and the drills have been poor. We need to sort this out before we go any further. You know your drills are better than that. Don't let that happen again, alright? Right. Officer Watch. Washing. Don't do radar, I said. Panel. John offers a bit of expert coaching to the trainee. All, and I mean all of your problems, are because you're wound up like a top on there. Yeah. So you're snatching at the stick. Yeah. All right, at slow speeds, you've got to allow the planes to bite in effect. Yeah. All right, so by giving them all of this, all you're doing, yeah. waving them everywhere, putting stress on the plants, yeah. all right, and you're not giving them a chance to react. All right, but I can't say I'm recommending you for a qualification no. until I know you can come on there relaxed. As soon as you get your head sorted, yep. you're there. You can play. Yep. All right? So, good work. Good effort. All right? Good so. work for the first time. But not everyone gets off so lightly. That was the worst dive we've ever done and the worst I've seen since we started work up. Everybody in here, except Logs H, who was a trainee, has done this countless times. I will not accept that standard of drills, enthusiasm and attitude ever again. Don't make myself clear. Carry on. Logistics officer Richard Farrow isn't doing much better. That's what made the store ship this time so challenging is that it came in um, very different quantities in the different boxes. It, it, it wasn't an easy muster for the guys yeah. to do. His shortcomings have seen him placed on an official warning. The captain and XO are supporting him, but they're also monitoring his performance. It means that as he delivers his weekly logistics report, his career is hanging in the balance. If I brief him on where I'm concerned and the things that I've got to deal with, then the captain is more aware, and equally, he can then provide that support to me. So this is a key part of that, and, and that's why I enjoy giving that brief, because during that brief, I know that the captain's happy, and I know that that's how I get the support back through. Submarines have always been a dangerous place to work. There are limited means of escape in an emergency. Cox and Paddy Parsons is taking the trainee submariners through the escape hatch drill. Right, to set the scene, um, HMS Turbulent is conducting a period of dived operations in the Red Sea. Whilst at periscope depth, there is a large bang and the submarine is sent to the seabed, some hundred metres below. Losing their air supply can be fatal. Suffocation is a major source of submarine catastrophe. 
so oxygen candles are carried to generate breathable air. But they have their own risks. There was an incident involving the explosion of an oxygen candle some years ago now, in which uh, two members of the submarine service died, one of whom was a, uh, was a friend of mine. And he really found out when, I, when, his, when his picture came up on the, uh, on the TV. And I saw his face smiling back at me. I recognised him immediately. And uh, the first thing I remember was that, that, was that he, uh, he used to flick my ears when I was on the periscope. <laughs> OK, the candles will get hot and we'll expel oxygen into the compartment for the survivors to breathe. You know, we do live in a dangerous environment. We accept it. Um, terribly tragic for the families of, of people who who are casualties in, in peacetime or, or in wartime. In the most serious emergencies, the men may have to abandon ship. The survivors will rig the tower for escape and then they will dress in their specially designed escape suits. It also contains a one-man life raft for use on the surface. But most of the men take the mortal dangers of submarine life in their stride. Going underwater in a nuclear power submarine doesn't uh, fund me at all. We've got a nuclear reactor 30 yards that way. I've got 20 tons of high explosives 30 yards that way. And normally when we're dived, there's hostile warships 30 to 40 meters above us trying to find us. And of course, the seabed could be as little as 15 meters beneath us. It's quite a dangerous environment to operate in. The things that worry me are if we get cancer detected on our patrol, which is supposed to be covert, it's going to be briefed at the highest level back in the UK. That's the Prime Minister Cameron and it's not going to be good for us, the submarine, the submarine service, or the Royal Navy. That's what worries me, and that's always in the back of my mind. The crew are now just days away from Fujairah, but before they get there, Richard will face a final reckoning. Am I suited to being a submariner? I, I don't know. After safely navigating the Suez Canal, negotiating the Red Sea and transiting the Babel Mendeb Strait, HMS Turbulent is days away from the port of Fujairah. When she leaves there, the UK's only Tomahawk missile platform in this unstable region will begin a top secret phase of her 10-month patrol. And for reasons of national security, our cameras will have to leave. They're now on patrol in one of the world's most unstable regions. And the area is about to be shaken up once again. We've had news in today that um, Osama bin Laden, the head of Al-Qaeda, um, was killed uh, very recently by um, US forces uh, within Pakistan. Um, and that's got quite an impact now. Actually, you know, one of the reasons we're here is to, uh, to stop terrorism um, going to the UK shores. Um, the impact of his death uh, is going to be one of two things. It's either going to stop Al-Qaeda in its path um, or uh, it creates more heads, so to speak, and actually compounds the problem. And um, it's going to make our time exceptionally busy uh, operating east of Suez. But even in the most dangerous of places, there are certain jobs that just can't be neglected. The aim of Captain's Rounds is threefold as I see it. The first one is that um, it checks the material state of the submarine. Um, the second part is it gives focus for the team. There are periods of uh, boredom, is the only word for it. You know, you get, you get pure adrenaline and then periods of massive boredom. Actually, this has given a focus for the team. Help you blow away, yes, AMS, ready for rounds. OK, I'll do it the other way around if that's all right. And the third part is making sure that we're proud of our submarine before we present it for diplomatic purposes alongside of Fajara. By the time it gets to the captain, it should literally be a, um, a wandering around, being able to look straight down into the detail, which he'll be able to do, because he's done all this himself. <laughs> he's been exactly where we all are. He knows all the little hidey holes and the little, uh, those special areas that, that always get missed, and so he'll go straight to those. And if they haven't been done, then he'll know what sort of standard we're at. And uh, we'll keep doing it, and we'll keep doing it, and we'll keep doing it until we meet the standard. OK, thanks. Is this a distraction technique? No, it's all, sir. Please send in unison. Yeah. Thank you very much. Drink, sir. Very nice. I'll move on in a minute. 
clean galley. As the men prepare to embark on the next top secret phase of Turb's mission, their thoughts turn to their own futures. At six foot five, Timo is the tallest man on the boat. He's got dreams of training as an officer, but before he can start, there's one last hurdle. He needs the captain's approval. ETWSM Timson, sir. Salute. ETWSM Timson to raise CW papers for the 23rd of April 2011. Standard ease. Sir, during his time on HMS Turbulent, Timson has displayed a mature and enthusiastic approach to all tasks. He has been an asset to the WE department in all sections he has worked for. Timpson has always shown a keen interest in being selected as a candidate for wardroom. Sir, I believe Timpson has the right attitude and drive to make the step up. Sir, I shall always look up to Timpson and he has my full recommendation as a candidate for wardroom. Okay, thank you very much Chief Brogan. Okay, Timpson's big step to uh, make it up to the officer corps. Don't underestimate this challenge, it is a big one. So look for those opportunities and demonstrate to me that actually the decision we're going to make, to do, uh, make today to put you forward is fully justified. Approved. E.T. Timpson, hope, salute, right turn, quick march, right wheel. <laughs> Good one, Chief Crookin. Okay, thanks very much. I uh, went into the uh, captain's requestment and uh, for my papers to be raised for a, a, a wardroom candidate. This is the first stage in quite a, quite a long process towards becoming a, uh, an officer. Meanwhile, Richard Farrow's once glowing prospects have faded. Over the last few weeks, the logistics officer has not lived up to expectations. On the professional side, yeah, things haven't gone quite as well as I would have hoped uh, and my, my aspirations I think uh, um, have changed somewhat. Um, uh, I've been placed upon um, officers quarterly warnings which if followed to completion um, would lead to my um, dismissal from the service. Realistically that my position is, is untenable on, on board the submarine. Am I suited to being a submariner? I, I don't know, probably not in, in, if I'm really honest with myself. 18 metres. The submarine service isn't for everybody. Um, it's an exceptionally difficult job. Uh, it's an exceptionally difficult environment. It takes all sorts to do the job, but equally, we don't accept anything less than 100%. Um, you have to give 100% commitment to the submarine. You have to do your job to your utmost. And if you don't achieve that, then actually the service may not be for you. Uh, and it's the collective versus the individual career path that becomes the most important part. As the crew approach the last leg of this part of their mission, the captain sums up their achievements so far. OK, um, let's put April into perspective. In one month, we've done two uh, operations, uh, one for NATO, one for national. Um, 170 or in excess of 170 military rackets, over 300 merchant vessel contacts and um, warship contacts. We've operated in two oceans, one sea, transited through the Suez Canal, transited through the Bab el Mendeb. We're now operating in an area that we're not quite familiar with but getting used to. We've operated in the Gulf of Aden, going to the Gulf of Oman. There's huge amounts of stuff we've done and we've provided all the way through that, we've provided Tomahawk in two different theatres continuously. That's it, thanks very much. As the only British submarine in the region capable of launching Tomahawk missiles, Turbs will be under intense pressure over the coming months. But bonded by their recent experiences, the crew will be ready for whatever's thrown at them. Our cameras may be leaving, but for Britain's submariners, the mission never stops.